It all began with a doubt. Samshaya in Sanskrit. I was about to complete my master's at the University of Alberta, and I stumbled across a quote from Joseph Campbell. Wherever you stumble, there lies your treasure. I had stumbled across a intriguing observation, intriguing description from the Mahabharat, longest epic of humanity. What was so intriguing about this reference? The Mahabharat text is written in Sanskrit and the reference went something like this. Yachaisha Vishnuta Rajas Trailoke Sadhu Sammata Arundati Tayapesha Vasishta Prashtata Krata. The author of Mahabharat was describing a unique arrangement of two stars as seen from the earth at the time of the Mahabharat war. The Mahabharata text said that the star Arundati Alkor was walking ahead of star Vashishta, Mizar, at the time of the Mahabharat war. And why was this observation something intriguing to me? Because if we look at this star pair today in the sky, every one of us will see that it is the star Vashishta that is walking ahead of star Arundhati and not the vice versa, as described in the Mahabharata text. This was very surprising to me with my knowledge of astronomy. And when I started studying, I realized that a good number of Mahabharata researchers, but also astronomy researchers, have looked at this observation and they found it impossible, impossible based on our current knowledge of astronomy. And that was my doubt. Why would the author of Mahabharata would write something fantastic, impossible like this? But Shraddha is what kept me going. Shraddha is the inner conviction. And I wondered, why would the author of Mahabharata would write such a thing? What if it is true? Because if it is true, in principle, if we can find out why this thing happened, why star Arundhati was seen walking ahead of star Vashishta, and if we can find out the timing of it, then we know for sure the timing of the Mahabharata war which is something many people are curious to find out. So I started my research and after 15 years, from 1995 to 2009, finally, I was successful in demystifying this astronomy observation. Remember, wherever you stumble, there lies your treasure and I found my first treasure. The analysis of this demystification told me something very special, that the Mahabharata war happened more than 6,500 years ago. This made me curious. I wondered if there were additional evidence in the Mahabharata text which could be validated, which could be tested similar to this Arundhati Vasishta observation. And if that additional evidence could tell me more, more precise information about the timing of the Mahabharata war. So I started studying the Mahabharata text. Mahabharata text is super rich in various types of evidence, astronomy evidence, oceanography evidence, climatology evidence. One of the event that is described in the Mahabharata text is the Mahabharata war. And one individual, Bhishma, he fell down in the battle during the war 
and then mahabharata text tells us that he was on the bed of arrows sharashaya until the day of winter solstice and this is where i stumbled for the second time because at that time when i did a survey i found the prevailing opinion of all the mahabharata researchers was that this bishma was lying on the bed of arrows for only 58 days but when i consider that number along with my other findings based on arundhati vashishta observation i realize that 58 is not acceptable number in fact the duration for bishma on the bed of arrows from the 10th day of the war to the day of winter solstice has to be more than 90 days so i started mahabharata study again and to my pleasant surprise i found that actually mahabharat has amazing descriptions of chronological sequences of these events which tells us decisively that bishma was indeed on the bed of arrows for more than 90 days and with that information i found something more precise that mahabharat war only took place sometime between 7000 and 9000 years ago now i was more curious is there additional evidence in the mahabharata text that potentially can tell me when exactly the mahabharat year the mahabharat now i was more curious is there additional evidence in the text of mahabharat that can be tested in a scientific fashion which potentially could tell me the exact year of the mahabharat war and the answer is yes there is amazing evidence of the planetary positions with respect to the background nakshatra system the indian astronomy spread throughout the text of mahabharat during the war times and when you start putting them together in a scientific fashion with consistency with consistent logical reasoning all of them fit like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle or pieces and words and letters of crossword puzzle and all of them lead to only one very specific year of the mahabharat war and that is 5561 bce what does that mean the mahabharat war happened more than 7500 years ago or to be precise 7583 years ago the terrestrial event that is described in the mahabharat is the flooding and destruction of krishna's dwarka exactly 36 years after the mahabharat war so if the mahabharat evidence is telling us that the war itself took place in 5561 bce then that means the predicted timing for the flooding and destruction of krishna's dwarka is 5525 bce this time i did not start looking for evidence in the pages of the mahabharata but rather in the pages of the scientific journals on oceanography on geology geophysics geochemistry climatology and so on and to my pleasant surprise again i found enormous evidence for this year 5525 bc from around the world including in the vicinity of indian subcontinent right at the geographical location of krishna's dwarka there is evidence for sudden 15 meters rise of water right in the middle of 6th millennium bc on the east coast of india there is evidence near pumpuhar for sudden ingression of sea water between 6000 and 4000 bc there is the evidence for sudden formation of a black sea when the water of atlantic rising water of atlantic entered mediterranean sea from mediterranean sea to aegean sea from aegean sea to sea of marmara and finally 
the high pressure of the seawater breaking through the Bosphorus channel and instantaneously forming what we call the Black Sea. Again, 55, 25 BCE. If we go to Caribbean, seven different locations, sudden sea level rise of 6.5 meters. And there is much more evidence around the world. When I started studying Valmiki Ramayan, I found close to 600 specific astronomy references. And all of them, again, in the fashion of solving a jigsaw puzzle, take you to 13 millennium BCE. But there are six references which are so precise. Two of them describe the pole stars of Ramayana times of 13th millennium BCE. For example, in the north, it is the star Brahmarashi or Abhijit or Vega in modern astronomy. And in the south, it is star Agastya or Canopus in modern astronomy. They were the pole stars in 13th millennium BC and as described in Valmiki Ramayana, but also another Indian text, Surya Siddhanta. In addition, there are four specific references which align with the cardinal points of 13th millennium BCE, the spring equinox, the fall equinox, the summer solstice, the winter solstice. And someone reminded me, remember, celestial is equal to terrestrial. Have you found any evidence on the land that also corroborates the timing of Valmiki Ramayana? I did not have to wait long. In 2020, I came across a research paper which refers to and shows with empirical evidence for the sophisticated ports and therefore sophisticated navigation in India going back to 18,000 plus years. And why is this important? Because one of the character, Ravana from Ramayana, he had his kingdom situated at the equator and from there, he was controlling significant portion of the world through sophisticated navigation. Now, a number of you would have heard the text called Rugveda. It is very ancient text. And both Mahabharata and Ramayana refer to this Rugveda. About five, six years ago, a professor from America near Boston, asked me if it is possible to do the dating of Rugveda. Again, I started reading Rugveda and looking for astronomy references. This time, I was not so lucky. Yes, there are astronomy references in Rugveda. However, they did not help me determine the dating of Rugveda. But there is terrestrial evidence of River Saraswati. The river Saraswati that is now extinct, but it was the grand or the grandest river of our Vedic times, flowing all the way from high mountains to ocean. And when I looked at the oceanography data, the climatology data, hydrology data, morphodynamics of the rivers data, it points to the timing where we can say that definitely some portions of Rugveda are more than 24,000 years old. So we can summarize this in a simple fashion as Mahabharata happening more than 7,000 years ago, Ramayana happening more than 14,000 years ago, and some portions of Rugveda definitely more than 21,000 years ago. At this point, many co-conspirators join me. I'm working with a group of more than uh, 20 researchers who have allowed with their own original research to cross this barrier of 24,000 years and exploring evidence beyond 24,000 years. As we go back in deep antiquity, the amount of evidence, the quality of evidence certainly becomes rare. However, with whatever evidence this team has gathered, we find signs of civilization in India going back to 
Toba explosion that is about 70,000 years ago. I learned few things through this journey. One has to be fearless, but one also must be humble. One must be fearless in making bold conjectures, but one must be also humble to accept when the evidence does not lead you to a conclusion and when your conjecture is wrong. One more thing. Doubt, but also conviction, when put together and used in a creative fashion can lead to growth of knowledge. And while we sometimes succeed and many times we fail, it's very important to remember the growth of knowledge that it unleashes. Thank you and Namaskar.